Hello and welcome to block 24 of our Rock the Casbah collection. I'm loving this block and it is one of the simpler blocks that we have to complete in this collection. We've got beautiful applique on the corners here and then this really pretty stitching that just gives dimension and almost makes it look like it's lifting up off the fabric. The quilting design that we've used is a fairly open one on the quilting design and it just really highlights the block. I know you're going to be able to use this quilting design both in continuous and um, block versions for years to come. As always, don't worry about the fact that we've got a white outline showing here around our blocks. Remember that they are stitched with wash away thread so that you do not see them once the project is completed. Okay, let's get started creating this fantastic block. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got my um, cutaway stabiliser. I'm going to lay my embroiderer's felt down on top of that and I'm going to stitch it down using the wash away thread. We are using wash away thread simply because it means that we are not leaving any excess threads in the project as we finish and we are trimming away because we don't want to have to put our seams together with all of that bulky stabilizer and um, padding throughout the seams. Once we've got that trimmed away I can take my 100% cotton fabric which I have lightly starched and pressed, lay it on top and stitch colorway two which is going to come through and show us um, where the outline of that block is. Colourway 3, I'm now going to come through and use my um, wine coloured thread and I'm going to begin the applique process. So Colourway 3 is going to show me exactly where to place my applique fabric and I'm using the wine applique fabric on this particular block. Now because this applique is going in the corner which veers off the block when I lay the fabric down I am and trim away the excess I'm actually going to leave a five millimeter edge along the or outside of the block outline of applique fabric and the reason that we do this is because the stitching um, sucks the block in for lack of a better term over the course of the design so what we want to do is to make sure that we can come through and still have that edge on there at any point. Now what we're going to do now is come through and trim and I'm being very awkward here so that you don't have to just see the back of my arm is come through and trim and now I'm on to the next side and I'm going to repeat and do the applique in the exact same spot again. Now again I'm going to place my fabric down And we're now up to colourway 6, which is going to tack down the applique fabric. And 
and then we can trim away the excess. Once again, leaving that five millimeter border coming off the block. Now, one of the features of my machine is to be able to pull the hoop forward to easily trim away the excess um, fabric pieces. If you don't have that feature on your machine, you can remove the hoop. I find this just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so now we are up to adding the satin stitches that are going to cover up the applique fabric and instead of just doing a straight stitch and I'm sorry what you can hear is a garbage truck coming by there um, so instead of just using a straight stitch on this particular block I'm using a decorative stitch and it is the bubble stitch just to add a little bit of extra interest now you may notice that my machine appears to be stitching at a rather high speed. It is actually not. I am stitching at five to six hundred stitches per minute. I've just got the video sped up just a little bit so that I don't bore you to tears. In real life, this block took one hour from start to finish to complete. And we can see here the second set of second side of the um, of covering up our applique. And that beautiful satin stitching. Now you can use any color you wish. Um, I have used four colors in this entire quilt. I've used dark teal, medium teal, a deep pink and a wine colored fabric and then thread. Okay so now we're up to the decorative stitching and the first color of the decorative stitching that we're going to do is the dark teal. The decorative stitching on this particular block is feathers and the way the stitches form whilst it does take a little bit longer than a regular stitch to stitch it is just a beautiful stitch and it almost looks like it's floating over our fabric so they really um, the stitches form the shape of the feathers which just give it that little bit of extra texture. Now some of the questions while this one's stitching because it is a little bit of time in the decorative stitching some of the questions that we've had about the Rock the Casbah quilt collection so far. Um, the first question that I have comes um, is always do I have to use embroiderers felt? The answer to that is no you don't but yes you should. Embroiderous felt is a really thin product. It enables you to get a really pretty block without the bulk. You could also use pellon. However, I feel pellon, I find pellon to be a little bit too thick. I used to use pellon myself before embroiderous felt came out. Um, and it disintegrates a little bit easier within the quilt block. Um, so look, you can use either, that's just my preference. The, um, we've already talked about colours. I often get asked what needle I use. I am using an 1175 needle. Got to do my trimming as I go along here, guys. Um, and I used three or four needles on the entire project of the 30 blocks. Um, stabilizer also comes into question often. Um, I am using a poly mesh cutaway and the first thing I do after I finish each block is take the cutaway out 
um, is, is trim it to the actual size of the block so that you do not see any of that extra cut away. The reason I use poly mesh is because it is thin and it doesn't add any extra bulk. Um, when I'm creating this project, I want it to appear at the end just as a regular quilt would. Only better, of course, because it's with embroidery. Um, so that is my product of choice. Um, if you can't get a poly mesh, I would consider a really lightweight um, sew-in interfacing. Might be a product that would have an equal sort of dimension. Um, and you can see here our stitching is just looking lovely. Now, what a lot of people have commented on is that I'm using the T-pins to hold my stabilizer in as well as having it hooped. And you're absolutely right, I am using T-pins there. They are fantastic for using with cutaway stabilizer. I find they don't work with tearaway because the tearaway just tears through it. But they are brilliant for that cutaway. And our stitching's coming along and that's the nearly the end. Forgot about that middle bit. I was going to say that's the end of the dark teal, but no. So as we come through, and there is just something very soothing about watching a machine stitch, isn't there? Um, we can see what we've got happening here. Um, now, 100% cotton fabrics versus other fabrics, is it really important? This one I'm pretty adamant on. I mean, I can't force you to do anything. It is your project. You can use whatever you want. However, if you use fabrics with a, particularly as the base fabric, which is our white here, um, with a nylon or polyester in them, they don't have the same bounce back qualities as cotton fabric. Um, and I would worry about the end project. If you wanted to do something like that, purchase a small piece of the fabric that you want to use and do a trial block or two just to see how it works and how those stitches are going to perform on it. When it comes to wadding, um, I'm a little bit of a whatever I've got hanging around kind of a gal. What I do try and do is to keep the entire quilt the same. I was lucky enough to have cut up for um, projects for shows that didn't go ahead last year. A whole lot of um, poly cotton wadding. And I've used that as my wadding of choice through these blocks simply because I had it around. So you can see that we're now on to the lighter teal colour and it's bugging the life out of me all of these um, thready bits that are running and I'm going to have to trim those away soon. But I'm loving how the colours look together. And if we come through, now, what you will see here is I've just run out of thread and I've got to pop a new bobbin in. So at the same time, I'm going to do all of my trimming. I'm a really terrible person on the do as I say, not as I do when it comes to trimming. Um, I will often trim while the machine is running. I've never hurt myself, but I have broken multiple needles and I have ruined a couple of pair of scissors doing this. So I strongly recommend not doing as I do, but do as I say. Um, 
colors to use whilst I've used all the same colors all the way through you can certainly choose to create your project however you wish um, and I think this quilt would be brilliant using up all of the scraps that you've got in your scrap pile um, because it uses just small amounts of different fabrics and because they are based on that Moroccan tile style you could easily get away with that I find the Moroccan tiles have an element of um, a couple of different things that I like I like the geometric style um, and I've always been a huge fan of Art Deco and I find that um, the Moroccan style tile has both of these okay so that's our feathers all done and of course I've got to come through and do the trim again and now we're on to the last of the decorative stitching which is colorway 10 and this is going to put the wine colored stitching uh, sorry the deep pink color stitching onto the wine applique fabric if you ever find that your um, the design time that it tells you on your um, machine is different from the time it actually takes that's because machines calculate times on basic stitching which is a tatami or a weave stitch we all as you may be aware um, satin stitches and many decorative stitches take a lot more time than weave stitches and that's where a lot of the difference comes in it also doesn't calculate how long you spend changing threads etc and I've broken my thread there excuse me for a second and now I can come back and do the second side now while I'm doing this prep your backing fabric iron it um, make sure there's no um, no major buckles in it or anything like that and get your wadding ready as well because that is what we are going to do next and I love how this deep pink comes along and just adds a real pop of life to the block it really I think elevates okay so now I'm going to come through and excuse my arms here for a second because I'm going to thread up with my wash away thread and then I'm going to take my hoop off and turn the hoop over I want to lay my wadding on the back if you need to secure this with tape you can I found it kind of held itself quite securely and I never had a problem so I didn't need it and then I'm going to run colorway 11 which is going to tack down that wadding now make sure that that doesn't lift up the edges there because remember we want to catch those in the seams after we've completed now that I've take now that I've stitched that on I'm going to come through and trim away all of the excess wadding again because I do not want that to end up in my seams and you'll see as I'm doing this that I'm using heavier scissors than my standard applique trimming scissors or my squeezes and that is just because the wadding is so much heavier now add your backing fabric return it to the hoop and stitch colorway 12 which is going to hold down that backing fabric and then we are ready for the quilting so the quilting on this block is actually called burnouts and that's simply because it reminded me of um, 
we've we've had a lot of hoons running around our place at the um, at the current time, um, and we've had lots of burnouts sort of at the corner of streets, and this particular applique design reminded me of that with the swirls of it, and also I just think the swirls go beautifully with the feathers. As always, you get not only the quilting that is included in this block but you also get a quilt block with just the quilting and you get the continuous quilting design um, that we've used here um, the other point that I will always want to make is if you don't want to quilt your blocks as you go you can just stop at colorway 10 which is when we finished all the regular stitching and put your blocks together at the end it is totally up to you and as my quilting comes through we are getting ready to finish and we are now done so what you can see here is our finished block the quilting is looking just lovely um, we do still have that white thread around our blocks but that is going to come out as we finish our blocks together so I hope you have enjoyed this block um, I hope you'll join us for the rest for the rest of the Rock the Casbah collection and until next time have a stitching day. Bye.